We're going to take our factory hood on this episode of our 71 Barracuda, the flat hood, and we're going to turn to a shaker hood. This is a Golden Star uh, hood we bought that I thought would fit the car. After putting it on, I'm just not happy with the way it sits and everything else and the work it was going to take to make this hood um, work on the car. I think it's going to be easier to convert this hood into a shaker hood. Now, saying that, what I don't like about the hood, I think it's when they stamp the shaker. It's got too much curve coming up here in the center. It's bowed down here and we fixed it, but this hood was trying to arch and curve a whole bunch where if you see the shaker hood's flat. Before that, what we're going to have to do, this hood being original, someone, uh, I guess, drilled some holes for a giant hood scoop in this thing. So we're going to have to go through with the TIG welder. I'm going to weld those up. Also, the hood was sandblasted. I stopped it in time, but um, you can see there's a couple areas where the hood got warped from the sandblaster. So we're going to have to take our heat shrinking disc, come up from the bottom and shrink that metal. And you can see right there, same thing. It's how it's, it's oil cannon. The good thing about oil canning is it's close enough that we can get it back to the way it was. Same thing back here. I don't know if you could see it. There's a spot back here where they hit it. It's flat there and it dips in right in that support area. So we'll go through, we're going to fix that. And uh, what we're going to end up doing then, if you look, I got some areas under in this hood too that's rusted. We'll go through and fix those and get the hood in a factory original condition first. And then what we'll end up doing is this came with the shaker hood kit. This is the support from the Golden Star. We're going to end up installing this on that hood. And that's what's going to turn the flat hood into the shaker. This is kind of how the factory did it. Now, another thing that's a red flag to me on this hood, this Golden Star, is if you look on the front of it, the, um, these areas up here is a little bit off there too. So, I mean, the bottom's okay, but really we're looking right here. I mean, that right there is off a little bit. So I need to figure out which part's off on the measurements. I was trying to look to see if anyone else is documenting this um, install and I didn't see it. So hopefully this will help someone else trying to attempt this process because I'm not happy with the aftermarket hoods. And uh, I mean, I have a feeling if you get one too, it might be better if you could find a factory hood and go in this process. Stay tuned and we'll try to figure it out. So I'm going to show you some of the process of getting the hood prepped before we actually start the shaker hood. I think that's the number one thing you need to, if you're getting a 50 year old hood, you want to know exactly what you're getting with. I think the Eastwood SCT with the 40 uh, grit stripping drum, what we're using right now, works really well. I mean, you can use a DA, sandpaper, chemically stripped. There's lots of ways to do it. And then maybe sandblast the, the frame underneath. We did try to dust this blasting on this hood. I've never used it before. And the guy said, there's no way it'll warp. Um, I have not had any luck with sandblasting panels that are this weak and give this much. So just a heads up and maybe a piece of advice save you some heartache and hassle. So right now we're using the heat shrinking disc just to shrink the metal out where it stretched from the sandblaster where he went in between these frame areas. You could see the main parts right there. I did grind out first and we're just using the heat disc getting it hot letting the metal stretch and then when we cool it down with the wet rag it's going to shrink even tighter and the molecules will move around that area. You do that and then I'll take a body hammer and kind of massage it out a little more. This got most of the spots really close. Um, I think the key to do all this, you want to get this hood right. I'm going to reiterate this because if you start cutting in the shaker hood and your metal stretch and it has nowhere relief, you're going to end up fighting this whole process. That's why I think all the body work, again, should be done to the factory hood before you start this process. And I'm not saying there's not going to be body work after. There still is. It, that's what makes this process a little bit longer than most. Something else you might run into that we're just showing here is you could see there are about 3 16 inch holes. I think there was 10 of them on 
uh, maybe maybe 12 of them total in this hood um, and we just went through with the TIG welder did a quick little short blast and dabbed it with the air honestly the TIG welder is great you can also make this you're just gonna put a little bit more heat and on such an area that wants to warp so fast it's actually this is the preferred method if you have that option since I'm filling a hole, I'm using a 3 16 tungsten. I'm using a 16 inch filler rod. Honestly, you can use 8 inch too at this level since you need to use so much at once. Here's some other spots we found with the sandblaster and uh, things that we're gonna repair on this hood. This is the great thing about sandblasting though. On this inner structure and everything, you're really gonna come up with a lot of pinholes and everything that you didn't know were there. This hood looks solid, like it was perfect underneath. And until we blasted, we really did find all these little pit holes and shortcomings. Not a huge deal, we're just gonna make a little patch here or there. TIG weld in some of the holes, just like I did the hood. I did that on a lot of them after I cleaned them up. And then right here on the larger section where it's all ate up, we just did a, a longer patch and kind of bent it to the shape. When it's all set and down, ground down and everything, you're never going to know. So the last step before we go ahead and start this shaker process, I'm adding a 3M uh, semi-flexible foam to all the gaps in the corners. Now it's not going to be like glue and I want to do this because it's really going to give the backside, the stamping, the outer portion of the hood really a good solid foundation to the inner structure when we start cutting. It's not going to try to warp and when the sandblaster hit this, he kind of took a lot of this inner factory glue out. As you can see, most of the body work is done on the bottom and top. Uh, we did a lot of metal shrinking over in this area, and that's why it looks like it is. We got a little bit more finishing to do, but we're going to stress this hood a little more with cutting and everything else. We put that um, foam stuff on there, you see, and that really strengthened up this hood where it's not bowing from when the sandblaster blew it all out. Now, saying that, do your body work first on the hood. Get it lined up before you go ahead and cut all this in and install this shaker hood and find out that there's a giant dent and two inches of bondo here and the hood's just not up to par where you want. That's why I showed it first. That's why I'm stressing it out. Strip the hood, get it done. I think you'll be happier with it in the long run. Also, you're gonna have to do some welding, so that's another thing. You don't wanna be welding by bondo and all that. So. Here we are, we got our template from shakerhood.com. Uh, it's really good, they wrote a couple things and I'm also gonna compare it to the shaker hood, our old um, Golden Star shaker hood. Now, I took measurements both with the tape measure, but like you see on tape measures, they do wiggle a little on the end. So I used a, a square also on my, to verify all my measurements. What we're looking at right now, they mark right here. So from here, to the edge is 15 inches. First, you're gonna line it down the center, then you get this at 15 inches, and from this corner to this corner at 15 inches. Now, they want 28 inches from the corner hood to there, and 28 inches from the corner hood to there. Now, our hood didn't work out that way. I know I was messing with this angle here with the fender lip, and um, what I ended up with 28 and three quarters, and 28 and a quarter. Now, I'm gonna show you on the Golden Star hood in a second, that ratio matched up with that hood too. So I'm gonna say, I don't know if this measurement's as important as the rest of them. If it is a little bit off, I mean, I don't think you freak out. Both hoods are both measuring the same way. Um, also, your center down here um, is 13 and a half inches. I also did that. One more thing I do wanna say, the shaker hood is centered on the hood. If you ever look at your um, shaker car, your, at least your big blocks, I'm pretty sure the 340s are the same way, they're off center in the car. Um, so what it does, they make it in the bottom base plate of the shaker to fix the offset where the engine's gonna be over this way a little bit much. That's so they can get the engine in there and the driver's not cramped up and still has access to the gas pedal. So there's another piece of information. Um, so what I did, there's our measurement off the shaker hood. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of this template on the Golden Star hood and then we'll go over to the Golden Star hood and I'll show you what we're looking at. Here's the template as it was sent to us by shaker hood. Um, it has detailed instructions where, where to cut the template, how to cut it out, um, and the steps in doing exactly what I described in the previous process. 
As you can see, I put it on the Golden Star hood and I marked right here all the measurements to compare to when I go to the factory style flat hood. Just so we know, it's just one of those more confidence things and I'm sharing it to you so you might have better confidence on more measurements I think you can't go wrong with. Okay, so as you can see, those are the pictures of the template in place on this Golden Star hood. Now, there's about an eighth inch gap all the way around from that template to this area. And it took me a minute to figure it out, but what that eighth inch is, is the indent we're gonna put in. So we're cutting it out, and then you're gonna have this lip when you crimp it, and that should align it up. Now saying that, it's not perfect uh, with the Golden Star. Also, um, I'll show you a couple pictures. I made this template off the shaker ring, and I'll show you how I did that right now. The reason I did this, I thought a wooden template would just fit a lot better and be a lot more accurate than a paper. But I traced out the studs as the shaker ring was just sitting on top of this wood uh, we had, dropped it down onto the wood, and then traced real close to the actual shaker ring. I then was able to cut out around it, and then after I put the shaker ring back on, take a flap disc and just clean up the edges. So what this template I'm doing for is mostly for my bolt hole locations. I also wanted to see how the shaker ring was going to fit before I put it in there. And with the shaker ring, actually I'll grab it real quick. If we put the shaker ring in there, we don't know if it's centered because it's sitting up right there. I mean, we could kind of get a... a you know, a ruler on it and verify where it is. However, what I thought would be better and make sure our bolt holes are lined up perfect was cut this template with the holes in it, fit it on the hood, and that hood is not my hood, so I don't want to mess up someone else's hood. So we're taking an extra step with some scrap metal, and we're going to do this first, and then we fit it in here. And it, it I mean, it's got a little bit of movement, but for the most part, that verifies that this hood is going to be pretty close to the template right there and the shaker ring trim. Now, I also took some measurements off this hood that when I go to put this shaker piece on top there before I do my crimping, I'm going to verify these measurements so I know that it fits here and it's going to fit there. Where we are, because with the, the differences, we're at, so this hood measured 13, we'll go over the measurements here from the inside trim ring what we're cutting out first. This hood was, now this is the, where that eighth inch gap comes in, but we're at 13 and 5 16 back here. And again, this is what I was saying, this side is showing 28 and uh, 3 quarters of an inch, and that, that's about what we're looking at there. This one was 28 and 3 eighths, so the ratio is also the same. Now, both sides here are 14 and 3 quarters, there and there, and we're centered up here. Now, for our template, we put it in there. Like I said, it fits really good. From those same measurements, without our indentation, so our measurements on the edges of the shaker ring, trim ring, is going to be 14 inches here. We're centered there, of course. 14 inches here. We're looking at 26 and 3 quarters there. 27 and an eighth and 12 and 5 eighths here. So, like I said, before I use the crimp tool, I don't know what they're over there, but before I use that crimp tool that we'll go over in the future, we're gonna verify and we're gonna put this on there and trace it and we're gonna make sure we're tracing that edge off those measurements and we're gonna mark this edge. And then we're gonna drill our holes through and our bolt holes should line up right on the sh uh, shaker ring. So, um, let's go back to this hood right now. We're going to take off the paper. Now, what else I also did on this trim ring before we go ahead and, you know, do anything. I'm going to try to take it off without destroying it. I actually didn't trace it. I used spray paint. Um, and what I did, I think, just think that line is going to be a little bit crisper versus tracing it. I don't trust paper templates. You know, you kind of can push them in when you're tracing them. So this is how we did it. We used some self etching primer. Um, and like I said, when we get ready, we'll take it off. But that gave us a really good template. I'll connect the dots right here and there. You know, there's a couple spots. Like I said, I painted over the tape there. So I'll mark that, trace the lines. Um, before we do this and before I do cut this, I'm going to flip the hood and take a look at the inside bracing. I think the inside bracing is going to be 
easier to cut first and then come back and cut this so we're not trying to fight bracing and glue and everything else. So stay tuned, we'll flip it over and then we'll come back and uh, I'll figure out the inside first and show you a couple things on that. Thank you. So here we are, we're cutting out the inner structure. I placed the um, bottom of the shaker support on here and I kind of just trace the edges and then I went and I traced the inside and what I'm doing, I'm slowly working the areas to cut. You don't want to cut too much on this. Less is more. You just do a little bad time. The good thing, what I was using with the spray foam, I said it's not a bonding adhesive or anything else. So I'm able to kind of just pull it. You see it, it's on there, but you can pull the foam right off. It breaks pretty easy, but still gives structure from the outside from pushing it. You could see some of the factory uh, panel bond in there. So we just, you could see it's not even holding at this point. You're able to pull it out. Um, here we are, we're working our way to the front again. A little at a time, I cut way more than this. I want to leave most of the inner structure under this hood, but the more I kept fitting this on there, it just kept going in the way. So my opinion, I think the best way to do it when it's all said and done is leave about an inch and a half overlap around the whole outside of this frame you know, where they overlap, and then that's where your cut line's gonna be. So on the outside, an inch and a half in, all the way around an inch, give or take, we have a good welding area. So this is the big moment. Now that the inner structure is all cut out and there's nothing in our way, we have our shaker numbers all verified, we're gonna go ahead and cut the outer skin out for the shaker. Now this is cutting it out, um, on the inside of the hood where it's gonna recess under the shaker trim ring. So it's gonna be smaller than our shaker trim ring and our wooden uh, support piece. But what you wanna make sure you do, you wanna to try to keep the heat out of this because there is no backing structure behind it. I think the pneumatic metal saw is the easiest way to still turn it and keep the heat down. I mean, it's gonna to try to fight back and forth a little bit, but I think it's the less of all evils. Make sure you cut on the inside of the line and then take a surface prep disc, a flap disc, something, and just grind out to the outside. It's better go that route than to cut too much because putting it back would be a lot harder. Um, I mean, minus the obvious here, this is pretty straightforward. Just cut the line, uh, take your time. Now here's the part where I think the wooden template was key to this whole deal and made the project come out so much nicer. I took all the measurements, I took off that golden star hood, set it on top of this hood where I had to go, verifying also my measurements from the shaker hood one. Um, and what I did, I taped them there, made sure everything's gonna line up, and we know this is the actual size of our shaker ring because you know we ground it right down to the edge of it, it's perfect. Once we have it centered, we can trace this around and we know exactly where we're gonna put our indentation and our uh, thing that recesses the shaker trim into the hood. There really is no guesswork here where we have to come out with the pliers a good inch or something like that. This to me just made the process easier. So a little change of plans. We decided to do the recess with a bead roller. Um, I just think this is going to be a cleaner look than doing the pliers. I'm not saying you can't use the pliers. Um, the more I got thinking about this, I just, the bead roller mounted solid uh, in the center was the way to go. This is the speed we actually did the bead roller. I'm going to speed it up. I just wanted to do this short clip to show you that this is a slow process still. Probably faster than the pliers, but this is a take your time. You don't want to go back and forth. This is a one shot deal that, I mean, Hammer and Dolly can fix it, but it's going to be a huge pain in the butt. So here we are. We sped the process up a whole bunch and it still is not even that fast. Um, just, we got our bead roller right on the edge of that purple mark line and that's where our shaker trim ring stops. If for some reason you are too far on the inside so, towards the shaker trim ring, you can also kind of take a flap disc and just clean the ring up a little bit. I think you're better off getting a recess closer in 
than the other way around and have a big gap there. Saying that, the way we did it with the wooden template, there was no issues. We just followed the line and honestly we were spot on on that shaker trim ring. I was really happy with that. It was a little bit of work to do that wooden template. I mean, not even that much, but it saved so much uh, more in the long run. And what I'm doing, I'm leaving my uh, roller right in, in line and we're actually moving the hood around it so that's stationary and you see we got two boards to kind of support the hood and I got my son and my wife kind of supporting it. it's a big hood and a big piece to work and then we're letting the bead roller kind of do all the work on it and like I said I'm really happy with this how this worked out it looks just like the pliers for the most part I'm going to show you the dies right now and how I have them set up to get this one so the top one and the bottom one you can see how it's positioned and that should give you the desired roll that you need to complete this hood. I then bolted the shaker trim ring on the piece of wood and what I did, I didn't show you, but I sprayed the whole inside of it with red spray paint while it was tied up against the uh, piece of wood. What that's going to do, that's going to show me where the edge starts, where the, if you look at the bottom of the trim ring, it's got an indentation that fits on that groove that we did and then a piece comes down you want to trim that so it looks all flush underneath so that's going to give us our template right there you could see the red on the shaker trim ring so honestly all we're doing right now then we're cutting out the actual trim ring part that's going to bolt on the hood and that's it and that's going to just give us another template to go off of just to make it easier and make it cleaner where we don't have to keep test fitting it on and off um, I think this again this is one of those things that's just saving us time in the long run and I think it, if I was going to do this again I would definitely go this route I was really happy with how this turned out so now we can actually go ahead and put this trim ring piece on here and we can actually finally drill our holes for the shaker trim ring uh, you see it's clamped in place I again verified all my measurements and my arrows where it's gonna be you see it fits really good in the, the bead rolls we did you can see the hood still flexible because it does not have the support underneath so be careful you see anytime I drill I'm kind of pulling them down um, you also now that are, are, I'm going to end up tracing that inside edge because you see it's overhanging a little bit and that's going to push the trim ring up if you don't grind those inside areas down. Here's a big moment, the time we're gonna, first time we're going to fit the shaker trim ring onto the hood itself before we do the under bracing just to make sure everything fits right. And you see, I mean, really all in all, with no trimming on this ring, no nothing else, it really fits really well. Um, you could see the top front center is a little bit off. I really just think that's in the trim ring. All the measurements are on. Um, we'll go ahead and address that later. Now remember, this is aluminum. And uh, I say that because I had some issues hammering down this later. Um, but now we got it closed. There's a couple areas, like I said, I'd rather go back and retrim them. So now we're looking at the bottom. I'm finding what's holding the shaker trim ring from kind of just setting down all the way. And we're just marking those areas and we'll get them with the flap disc to finish off the top of this trim ring and get it just really tight and looking really good, almost like factory. Now that it's set down in place and everything, I just want to try to tighten it up a little bit more. So I did hammer and dolly. There was a couple areas I did crack at one point. So I had to go through and uh, re-weld it with aluminum welder. Um, I was prepared for that. So if you don't know how to weld aluminum, just be very careful with this step. I just want it to be perfect. So I decided to take that extra step. Here we are again, right before we're gonna put the bottom support on. I decided to go through and again add some more of that panel foam. Um, one piece of advice that maybe I did a little too much, I think I added a little too much for this where I actually had to hammer some down. It was pushing out in a couple areas a little bit too much. So be a little bit easier than me. I mean, I fixed the problem, but just piece of advice there. Now we'll go through with the Eastwood, I think one of those perfect panel prep tools. I'm using the whole, the spot weld hold punch tool. We'll go around and I did the outside of the trim ring and I'm gonna go back through right now and we're gonna just get the whole outside of the shaker support underneath. Um, 
Same thing, just every inch, inch and a half, punch some holes in it, and then that's where we're gonna end up welding um, that area. It's only really the outside of this piece that gets welded, and you can see I stopped and skipped the area. You can only weld this shaker support on areas that have support under the hood. Don't weld to the outside hood skin. It sounds obvious, but when you're in that groove, you might just go ahead and miss that altogether. After that, take a surface prep disc, flap disc, whatever, just clean up the area. Um, you don't want to be welding on epoxy primer. You know, obviously, we got the whole front side of this hood in epoxy to protect it, but we'll go through, clean off the epoxy, and then we'll go put weld through primer on just these areas. So the epoxy is a little bit stronger, but it does not weld good. So, piece of advice there. Now that we got our shaker hole cut out and it b-rolled the lip of the edge where the trim ring goes and the trim ring fits really good, um, I just want to go over a couple things. In the kit we bought, they got these pliers that have the indentation. If you look on here, I mean it's pretty close to about what we did. I mean this, I think the bead roller angles it just a little bit. Nothing that the eye is going to be able to see. And the aftermarket hood was actually straight up and down. So they're all slightly different. But the, what they want you to do and why we use the bead roller, these will work good. You kind of just hold it on the edge and you're going to squeeze and kind of, you got to do that the whole way around. And you just work your way around doing that little at a time. And the way these work, you're kind of putting a little indents in it. So what you would have to do you're gonna to have to go through a couple times. And also, you're gonna to have to go through with a hammer and dolly and really fix everything and smooth it out. And if you just look, even after going over once or twice, it's doable. I mean, I think if nothing else for the home viewer, and if you don't have an eight inch um, bead roller, this is a good option. But you could still see, I mean, it puts the angle in there and you could see all the little grooves that you'll have to body work and fix. Where if you look right here, this is a straight solid edge with one bead and we're able to run it one time. So that's why we want the eight inch throat bead roller set in the center and uh, the family kind of helped me kind of position the hood. It just made it a lot easier. Um, also, we'll look at the back side now before we go ahead and do what we're about to do. Um, and so the idea here, we got it all in um, weld through primer, bare metal weld through primer. And what we're going to do, here's the frame support. And again, this is all in weld through primer once we cleaned it up over the epoxy, just in the areas we're going to weld. This is going to fit, and I got my Coleco clamps where I'm going to position it. You'll see we're going to basically set this on right there. And then we're going to weld the top side of this one. I just, I'd rather look at it versus popping the hood and seeing it welded. And then we're going to weld the bottom sides of all these. Um, also, for you Dodge people, Dodge Challenger flat hood, uh, 70 to 74. Here's the support we cut out of this hood. The hoods are exactly the same. I had this laying out in the backwoods. Um, and uh, you can see the only main difference on the Dodge hoods in the, the frame and everything, it looks like this area forward where you don't have the front cowl area in the CUDA that, but from here back, it looks like the trim ring's not gonna fit. We all know that because the outer stamping's gonna be different. However, it looks like the main support, just for future reference, the actual hood support is gonna be the same, the CUDA and Challenger. So this part would be the same, you're just gonna use a different trim ring, but the process itself would be very similar. So just a little bit of information, we got two hoods to compare to here, and what I'm seeing is it will fit on a Challenger, the underneath portion with the Challenger uh, trim ring. So, all right, that's about sums up what we did. I also, I put all the foam packed in here, and like I said, the reason I did that is it's just gonna give a lot extra support under here. We're also going to panel bond this area, this area, and that area right there where we're not going to weld. So that's going to be right here. We obviously don't want to weld on the hood. So we got some 3M panel bond. You're going to see me put that on there, and then the rest of this will be welded. So let's get to it and finish this project up. 
everything's ready to go together now we're just doing the final steps with the uh, we took a couple areas down to bare metal and we're gonna put a little bit of this panel bond in just to stop some more rattling here um, I guess you could use a foam too I just thought at this point you know panel bond is kind of what they use from the factory so it wouldn't hurt to use this here to just really actually glue it down to really help the center so we just lay it in place um, we're going to center it on our shaker ring and like I said we got our Coleco clips on the bottom that I'm lining up that we know this is where they're actually going into the shaker hood trim ring little screw studs um, and then that's also going to make sure I don't weld up those holes by accident if I put one in all of them. You're probably okay with just the Coleco clamps but we're gonna go ahead and vice grip it just to make sure we get a really good seam all the way around and the whole assembly is pulled together. Here we are in the welding process now. So I picked this corner to start with. Usually I'll pick the center of an area and work our way out. But you see in the center, we kind of have a, a gap that kind of bows up where we can relief. I'm not worried about the metal coming up. So I picked both corners because they were the hardest to get the edges down. And to me, you really want to finish off this job and really work the edges down, let them blend like they would be from the factory. Um, this is obviously really sped up. This whole deal here took me about 25-30 minutes to weld all this and really tap in the corners. You see I'm just kind of applying pressure and also I got the sawhorse really low and I'm really holding on the edges of the hood where the supports are just so I make sure while we're welding we don't warp the bottom or push it or anything else because I am applying some pressure right here. But now we're working from the front down the sides obviously like I said where we put the panel bond we're not going to weld also be careful the panel bond is really flammable um, we didn't have any issues with this and then what I did after is went back through after we're done welding just put one more little bit of panel bond right along the edge and you want to do one in order just to make sure you're not getting high and low spots to me it's just going to clean up the whole process and make it come out in the back now since there's no relief going over a bracket I did start in the center and I started working my way out and then towards the other area that has the panel bond you'll see where I go over the lip and I'm just rolling it back over I think it was just easier to chase it that way to make sure there's no imperfections and that seemed to work out really well and I'm back to the center and now we're working our way which would be towards the driver's side Now we ran into one problem on this corner where it just wouldn't lay down right. And you could leave it, but right here, what I decided to do is just kind of pie cut it and see we're just gonna roll those edges down. And to me, it just you're never gonna notice it when this weld's all cleaned up. It's just gonna look like an, it, the piece was almost made that way. And honestly, if there's, you expect this intolerance in any part you need. This is just the key step on just test fitting and making this stuff just fit together. You just, this is expected. Now at the bottom of the hood's welded, we obviously flipped it over and are working way onto the top. This is another instance where you, to me, you want to start on one end. I started in the front and I'm working my way one at a time all the way around to the back because especially how it kind of bows up in the middle, you're just going to push the V up a little bit more as you're working this. And again, I'm leaving the Coleco clips in there and that's going to hold the place for when we put the shaker trim ring back on there. The final step, now the shaker trim rings in, we got to put the hood back in epoxy really before we do anything else to it. So what we're doing, DA120 grit, that's what the epoxy calls for, I use MP170, uh, this is a gray epoxy doesn't matter the color but we just prep it clean the area up you could see the hoods metal finished pretty good there's a couple ripples here or there I mean 
there's going to be some filler on it but all in all compared to what we started to and the amount of work that was put into this hood i think it's a really good clean solid base to work off of here I am with the epoxy just laying the final step um, just to show you the whole process. This is what's going to finish it off in the metal stage before the body work. Also kind of teaching my son how to do little things like that so it was awesome to he wanted to grab the paint gun and spray a little bit and the epoxy lays down easy enough. This is, this is the best way to start. We are also going to put the shaker trim ring in the epoxy just to protect it as well even though it is aluminum. All right, so we got our shaker hood. All the metal work's mostly done. There's a couple spots where it's a little bit wavy here and there. You could see it. I mean, we're gonna need some body work and some, some more touching up. Um, my final thoughts on this, I'm happy with the way this hood fits. I think all in all, it fits better than a Golden Star. I really like the corners. I think the curvature's right up here in the hood. Um, saying that, I think we're nitpicking this hood. I probably have 40 hours in this hood. You would have to find an original hood that's rebuildable and be comfortable heat shrinking, stretching metal with a hammer and dolly. You also got to find, you figure these um, trim rings right here are custom built, it seems like. People are putting the stamping in them and everything. And I also, I didn't show you, I had to weld up a new center punch. It wasn't lined up. So I aluminum welded a new hump in here and ground it down. Um, so no matter what route you go, whether it's a Golden Star, whether it's a year one, whether it's an OER, whether it's a AMD, I don't think it's making the hoods anymore. I would have bought one of those. But no matter what you do, it's going to be a lot of work. So pick and choose how you want to do it. If you're looking for a date coated hood for a certain e-body and you have that card and you want to make it look factory, um, go that route. I mean, if not, I think you can modify some of the aftermarket hoods to make them just as good as this. So we'll go over this one more time. So we got our shaker ring. Like I said, there's gonna be some body work that's gotta be done. And if you, but right here, this hood, I, I just fit it so much better than the Golden Star that to me, I still think I'm happy with the route we went. If you look underneath of this hood, you see all this is finished out pretty good. I cut the bolts down for the shaker trim ring and the shaker trim ring, it does fit really nice up in there. I will say, I think even if you get the aftermarket uh, hoods, you're going to have to re-weld all these bolt holes up and then grind the shaker hood to make it fit even better and do work that way. So no matter what, I don't think you're going to get out of, you know, just bolting something on and calling it a day. But you see, it's all primed. The rough body work's done. We're going to take it to the next step. Like I said, the hood opens, closes really good. Um, this car, the next step, we're going to end up just touching up some more things. We're gonna get it on a rotisserie soon and we're gonna start the bodywork phase. Most of the metal work is done. You see all the panels are gapped pretty good. So stay tuned for that. If you like these videos, if they help you out, um, like I said, um, like, comment, subscribe to our channel and uh, pass on to other people that are into this stuff. We also got some cool projects in the future. Uh, Mopar guys would be happy about that and uh, maybe a, a Chevy or so down the road. So. Like I said, stick with us, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Thank you. Have a good one.